So sometimes it's hard to explain that to men. What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. It's a two for today. I'm putting in a lot of labor during this ride and talking to you guys about a bunch of stuff. So this time I kind of wanted to talk about the reasons I don't like riding. <laughs> and it's a little bit negative and all of it is pretty much absolutely trite and not very serious. <laughs> but there are a few things that irk me about riding. <laughs> that I figured, who knows, maybe someone else can relate. Go ahead and like it ahead of time, why not? I guarantee you'll like it a little bit. Uh, subscribe if you haven't, and let's get talking. The thing that tends to irk me the most about riding a motorcycle is that I can't wear whatever I want, or if I do want to wear something that is not bike safe, I have to do a lot of extra planning and pack things with me. One of my greatest passions and one of the biggest ways that I spend my time online and sometimes, you know, in person is personal style. People have called me stylish online before, which is funny because I think my style is so shit because of the bike. Not shit, but it's like, it's not what it usually is. I used to be such a stylish gal. <laughs> But because of the bike, I'm so very limited and I kind of have a bike uniform that works for me and I think it looks good, but it's kind of not my preferred way of looking all the time. It's not that deep. There's plenty of women who like to wear like dresses and skirts and they also ride a motorcycle. This is not mind blowing information, but I like so many things about personal style. I keep like major tabs on the Vogue YouTube channel, Vogue UK, uh, Vogue Paris. I like paying attention to high fashion. I tune in during fashion week. There's like stuff that I care about that goes beyond just like liking to look put together. It is like I enjoy high fashion and I enjoy stuff that maybe isn't always attractive or flattering, but is like stylistically interesting. Honestly, that's like my biggest gripe with the bike. Obviously, the regular stuff like it's it's uncomfortable to ride in the rain, it's uncomfortable to ride when it's cold, that kind of stuff sucks about the bike, but it's not like you didn't know that ahead of time. <laughs> and sometimes that's kind of the point of the bike, is you get to be in the world, you get to be one with the road, <laughs> you get to be connected with your environment, you get to smell the smells, and, and that's one fantastic thing about the bike. So, can't complain too much about it being weather contingent, because I think that's what and I think I mentioned this before, that's what in Wisconsin gets us up and out uh, when it's nice outside, is the fact that we don't have all the clear days in the world, and so when it's nice, we're out, and then we just enjoy it that much more. We don't take it for granted. But let me think what else sucks about the bike. Perhaps the fact that it does take a little bit more TLC. It's not a vehicle that you can just kind of abuse. I'm sure some people do, and I don't know how bad their, their bikes are behaving because of it, but especially this machine, and, and it's new, and I'm the first and only owner, I want to take care of it better than I have been. Actually, this kind of pulls into the fact that I did um, my own maintenance this summer, and I did the oil change, bled the brakes and replaced the fluid. It was very like squishy <laughs> in the brakes and I knew it, it was squishy since like the end of last season and I just like didn't address it, <laughs> which is bad bike mommy ship. But I took care of that this summer. It was uh, pretty easy peasy, you should do it too <laughs> if you haven't. Especially things like oil chains and, and brake fluid. Unless your bike is like, I don't know, still under warranty and it would void the warranty to work on it yourself which I don't think it does in that capacity. Like, do it, man. It's uh, not that hard. And save yourself a little bit of money because Ducati maintenance is expensive. So yeah, that ties into the expense level of things. That's pretty annoying about some of the bikes is the expense. And, and if you get something like a Ducati or something kind of like specialty, I think the only bikes that are like really the most affordable to maintain are probably Japanese bikes because, oh, it's a Honda Rebel, I want one, I want one of those. <laughs> Anyways, the Japanese bikes have lots of parts available and a lot of people who can service them so there's, there's more competition. But things like, I don't know what the maintenance is like for Harley Davidsons, but I imagine it's, you know, a little bit more premium. So that's something about this bike in particular that I don't, don't love is is the fact that it um, it needs a little bit more premium love and and some of those 
uh, parts can be so expensive and it's like that for a lot of different aftermarket parts on Ducatis. That's one thing about a lot of different bikes is you have to, to pay to play if you want to change even simple cosmetic things. I mean, on Dan's FZ09, there's this cowl that can go on the uh, half of the seat that the passenger goes on and it's gorgeous to add this cowl and it looks stunning and really seamless and really completes the look of that bike especially if you don't have a passenger on the back very often like who cares i have a cowl on the back of my bike and i haven't taken it off once it costs two hundred dollars for him to to drop that on his bike it's like ouch it's just a bit of plastic but they they don't sell hundreds of thousands of them they probably only sell hundreds if, if that so it's got to be more money it's got to be worth their while so that's that's kind of a bummer thing about it but let me think cost what else can one complain about when it comes to bikes i suppose if someone were to spend a lot of time on their hair <laughs> then that could be pretty annoying because the helmet can can wreck that a bit i've not really notice helmet hair i think that's because low-key my hair is always kind of bad <laughs> not bad but i don't do much to my hair it's just not a priority to me obviously don't put the helmet on wet hair i think that's like a death sentence but that's kind of an annoying thing about the bike is it can ruin your hair game if, if you've got really nice hair other than that um gear can be kind of costly i mean it is costly that's another downside of riding in general and there's not a whole lot of variety when it comes to gear and hell the bike the the jacket that i wear most is actually not like an official riding jacket it doesn't have like armor in it or kevlar it's just a leather jacket and you know obviously that's not the most safe of me but it's also just the thing i'm willing to wear most often i do have other jackets that are pretty great but it just ends up shaking out this way uh oh we have some rain well i think i've been babbling for long enough thanks so much for listening to my rant on why i don't like riding sometimes I think I'll get into this bike in particular a bit more later, but you know, the expense, the limited fashion choices, the fact that you can't wear your favorite beautiful high heels or suede boots or skirts and dresses, but I think I have um, some ways to get around that and I can maybe show you guys some hacks at a later date. But we're gonna see if we can escape this rain or uh, see where it's coming from and outpace it, but till next time, Thank you so much for watching and ride safe. Bye. I can't multitask, so I was like, now that I'm done talking, I can pay attention to where I'm going.